I'm the mirror reflecting God's nature, yeah. but it's not obscuring me, hmm. right? I'm, I am made in the image of God. So I, God doesn't want to obscure me, right? No. He wants to show my glory <laughs> in the way it's uniquely made for me yeah. to the world and for others, right? Yeah. And and yeah. what we've been told is that, no, no, that's... That's a little, you're a little too high on yourself when you say stuff like that, or you're you're a little too haughty, or this or that. And sure, there's an opportunity for that for hubris to come in if you're not careful. Uh, if I were the enemy, that's what I'd want to do. Yeah. But but man, to to be able to look at you, Michael, you, Caleb, you know, my wife Sherry, and see the nature of God in that person. It's a powerful thing. Powerful oh my idea. Gosh. With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. Welcome, friends and allies, to the Exploring More podcast. Michael Thompson, hanging out with S.J. Jennings and Caleb Richwine. Over there, looking all handsome and young. Do we have a, do we have a war name for him yet? Uh, not one we can say on air. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love to come up with a uh, PG thirteen. That's right. One for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've called him a few things, but uh, yeah. No, that's what not the that? same as a warning. You remember, that, you remember the movie? You remember the movie Italian Job? Yeah. Um, handsome Rob. Handsome Rob. Yeah. Handsome Caleb. Yeah. You know, we'll yeah. We'll, we'll come up with something grittier. Handsome than, Rob. Uh, handsome Rob. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and. We are uh, we're doing a two part series. I think it should be a ten part series, <laughs> like most of the things that yeah, we talk about. Yeah, on um, on glory, um, and it's it's going to be it's going to be good because I think already um, if you if you just shut us off or turn or you might you might you might have missed even now when I say uh, a podcast on glory, your glory. This is a two-part podcast series on your glory that when God made you um, as an image bearer, he imparted to you um, what we like to say uh, parts of himself, Mm -hmm. um, Trinity DNA, qualities and characteristics that are godlike. And so... Um, it's actually not a um, it's not a prideful thing to consider or even receive and accept the idea that you have a glory. It's a critical thing. Yeah. And it leads not to pride. It actually leads to a beautiful humility. It's always baffled me. Yeah. That it's that it's trumped up like that. Like you get accused of being haughty somehow if you're centered on your identity as an image bearer. Yeah. And and how yeah, how you uniquely like a fingerprint, like a snowflake, how you uniquely bear God's image and what he wanted to set loose, turn loose, what he wanted to put on display. And so that is some things that we're going to uh, unpack. And that's why I feel like a couple podcasts, you know, Gary Barkalow has been our mentor and teacher on this subject. Um, I think a lot of people talk about calling. They talk about purpose, um, your why. I mean, those are really good things. And yet it's your glory that you bring to those things. Mm-hmm. Your why, your purpose. Mm-hmm. And the, your different, uh, the thing, one of the things I love most about that teaching is when I heard it, one of one of the first times I remember, like your glory is different from your role. Yeah, we're gonna get to all that, yeah, all that, that, and such clarity comes out of that. 
and the uh, you know I, I got a <laughs> every time I every time I bring my one of my books out I I see Dr. Leo Marvin <laughs> This groundbreaking book, you know, he's got a whole shelf of them, you know, and it's baby steps, you know, giving it to Bob. I always feel that way. If you haven't seen What About Bob, you should probably go watch it. Yeah, The Glory of Bob. Yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. But in King Me, it's a whole section. It's it's uh, it's how many chapters? Three or four. Yeah. Um, Four chapters are are committed to the glory of a king. Mm hmm. It's the heart of a king, the journey of a king, the glory of a king, and, uh, and the reign of a king. And the glory of a king, um, here's the chapter titles. Um, the Healing Path, Becoming You, Chapter 13, Healing Encounters, and then Chapter 14, The Glory of a King. So Gary's book um, uh, about the glory of your life it's and your, your call. call. Yeah, it's your call and calling. Um, I mean, so... To do a couple segments, a couple podcasts on this is um, will be good, um, and hopefully, it'll inspire and invite to explore more, go a little deeper, either in King Me if you don't have that, uh, and can see why there. It's it's the third part of the book because you got to get through the first two parts. Not I'm not talking about reading them. And word count. I'm talking about you have to move through the yeah the journey of a king and 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 recovering uh, from what's happened to us in order to get to the glory. And then Gary's book as well. It's your call. Um, the glory of your life is very much about um, recovering something. Mm-hmm. You know, meaning it's there, mm-hmm. but stuff happens. And, uh, and it, it's, it's one of those things that can get marred and can be um, shrouded. It can have, yeah, pe- it, people can, it can be mistreat it, can it be corrupted. mistreat you. I mean, it's so connected to you. It's, it, it's so connected to you that, um, yeah, it can be misinterpreted corrupted misunderstood so um i'm excited to just revisit this in in our stories Mm -hmm. in our journey and also hopefully encourage our friends and allies to um this is the good that god's up to in your life that's it this is the good that god's up to in your life is recovering you restoring you and turning you loose Mm -hmm. with this small g glory that, that's yours and yours alone and is to be experienced and enjoyed. Not by every, not everybody's going to enjoy it. Not everybody enjoyed Jesus. Not everybody connected. Not everybody wanted him. But um, the glory of your life is what you bring to the world and what the world so desperately needs. So we'll be right back to talk about the glory of your life and what glory is, what it isn't. And uh, why it's so so dead gum awesome. We'll see you in a minute, b- right back here on the Exploring More podcast. I am excited to share with you that our women's team has just released a new devotional on the Bible app titled The Deepening Journey. As I was writing day two, it took me back to my first deepening weekend. After a session on healing, I sat on a bench in the woods and poured my heart out to God. For much of my life, Others' hearts have mattered more than my own. My parents, my husbands, my kids. In that moment, I felt God whisper to me that my heart matters to him and that I am worth his focus and care. What if you knew that your heart matters too? What has me so excited today is that my moment on the bench is accessible to all women, not just those who can drive or fly to the deepening weekend, but to anyone who can access the Bible app on a phone or download the printable PDF from our website, I invite you to check it out today. Let's explore as beloved daughters navigating this broken and beautiful world, uncovering some of the things that come against us and Jesus's offer 
of healing, life, love, and friendship. Welcome back to the Exploring More podcast, talking about glory and the glory of your life. I want to I want to kick off with a quote from Howard Thurman, um, great theologian, um, lived in and during uh, before, but um, really came into a lot of his um, what he was offering the world uh, through the civil rights movement. Mm hmm. And, um, and Howard Thurman said, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do that because that's what the world needs is more men and women who are alive. And so when you, when you start, I, I love that quote. It, it's inspired me for many, many years. And, and yet the fundamental question of that is, well, what makes me come alive? I wonder right there, how many people know or have an idea or have experienced or even tasted just what what makes them come alive? Yeah, man, I, I hear that question and I immediately just want to start deconstructing it because I've done some of that deconstruction, mm -hmm. right? So what yeah. does it mean to be alive? Mm hmm. Because if you don't know what that means, right, yeah. you can't get to that point. Yeah. So to your point in the intro, you really have to go on this healing journey yeah. and, and recovering some things before you can even enter into this. Because there's so much that's damaged, mm -hmm. so much that's skewed, yeah. things that have happened to you, things you haven't received healing and recovery from, and we're all still on that journey, yeah. just can really skew you can you can think that something makes you come alive and it's probably the glory of your life and all that but if if there's strings attached yeah. to it if it's attached to the yeah. false self it's uh yeah. it's going to be skewed itself you know yeah. i mean and i think we can see glimpses of what it really is especially yeah. in hindsight along the way yeah. but yeah. it's the i think sj the the assumptions that were made the assumption series that's mm -hmm. a good series to even mm -hmm. You need to listen to that before you can listen mm -hmm. to this. There, there's a reason why it's part three. Yeah. And there's, there's certain things that need to be in place. And yet, you, this is the glory of your life is, is, um, is in you, whether you are in an intimate relationship with God or not. That, that, that's actually what he wants. Yeah. In, in the intimate relationship, yeah. he wants to restore you to what he intended when he thought or when he made or when he created, when he partnered with mom and dad to make you. Yeah, I think we're going to so, add a fifth uh, assumption. <laughs> so, I think we should. We should add, like, you have a unique glory to yeah, your life. I yeah. mean, I mean, in the conference, we get into all this. Yeah. And, and in the book we, books, we get into all this. So I, I want to read a part of King Me um, because it's just inappropriate uh, for framing where we're going, what, what we're doing in this subject of, um, yeah, I think, I think the title Caleb, you gave us was pursuing glory in my life for, for my heart, for me mm -hmm. and for others. Mm -hmm. And, um, you, man, there's, there's, we could just play around with titles for a while, recovering your glory, mm -hmm. um, discovering right. your glory recovering slash discovering I mean, all, all mm -hmm. of those things. So this mm -hmm. is, this is a, this is a part of King me, um, that I, I really like, uh, n not as much because I wrote it SJ because it's just good. It's would it, true. Would it make you feel better if I read it? Um, Want me to read it? No. Let's, okay. Let's, you read let's it. do an author's first. All right, you should. Because God is after, because God is after your glory. So is your enemy. Mm -hmm. But what was lost will be found. God promises. It works like this. You bring your glory to what you do, not get it from what you do. Take the uniform off, take the instrument away, remove the job, title, or responsibility, and your glory remains. It's just no longer on display in that role or on that assignment. If your glory was your role or uh, if it came from an assignment or something that you did, and even excel that, then your glory could be taken away. Mm -hmm. But the great news is 
that's not possible. Your glory can be muted or covered up. People may dislike it and wound you because of it, but it is still in you. Jobs change, careers change, activities change, even relationships change. Old doors close and new ones open. What doesn't change is the glory of who you are. The calling on your life is to bring that glory to all your roles and assignments in your kingdom journey and all that it touches. And you have it really when you're young. You actually, it, you, you probably had it in kindergarten. There were probably you're some things with it. that started to, to demonstrate it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and yet, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's gone along with you for quite, quite the difficult journey. Mm-hmm. Um, you've probably misused it, misplaced it. You've uh, probably had people uh, tell you uh, in, in, in times of when you're younger, yes, you are immature. So, so learning how to even offer, uh, it can be mistaken by others as um, annoying. Yeah, wanting <laughs> to get attention or yeah, yeah just yeah. jamming around. Or, yeah, I, uh, yeah. F- funny, I've seen images of of people when they're younger I, I just saw this the other day one of, uh with one of my girls taylor swift when she was younger she was on stage now it was the fireplace hearth mm-hmm. and she was singing and performing and she mr. was mr microphone like or six whatever. seven or eight now not mm-hmm. every kid that does that is going to end up mm-hmm. you know world tours mm-hmm. but it was in there yeah um, and so, I mean, all it takes is somebody to say, you're, you're really not that good or, you know, you really don't have what it takes. I, that is a story that is told over and over and over again, Oh my again, gosh! Yeah. over and over and over and over again. And some don't listen to that voice, but when that voice is somebody close to you, mm-hmm. Um, a parent, a teacher. Yeah, or life circumstances happen. I mean, if yeah. you know you're being carted off to hockey games, yeah, and then dad loses his job. Yeah. Well, now all of a sudden you're not playing hockey. Right. Maybe you would have been, you know, in the NHL or something. I mean, yeah. I remember Gary talking about it, when he was working on his book. It it didn't it didn't receive thumbs up. It, it wasn't something that initially was um, somebody wanted to work with them. I, artists, singers who, yeah, their demo, their, their, their album, I mean, couldn't get it on the radio mm-hmm. back in the 60s, 70s. Eight, you know, it's mm-hmm. just a very, um, and again, singing um, is not just, that, that's not necessarily the glory. It's how you sing. It's what you sing. Mm-hmm. Um, my, this may be uh, shocking to some. Um, do you enjoy Bob Dylan's voice? Like, like you enjoy his voice? Uh, it's it's entertaining. Okay, but it's not necessarily enjoyable <laughs> okay. to me. I mean, that those are two different things in my mind. Yeah, but somebody does. But he's a songwriter. He's a poet. Yeah, for sure. He's a poet. He. Uh, I'm not trying to offend any Bob Dylan fans. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that. You know, you don't have to have the best voice to be to, to see your glory on display mm-hmm. as a singer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's where, you know, this this gets tricky. Yeah. To get our arms around. Well, you know, if we've made it more confusing, hang on. We'll try to keep we'll try to keep moving, move this in a, in a direction where um, where, where hopefully it's, so, it, you understand more what yeah. what it is and yeah. how do how does it. How does it, um, how is it put on display? How does it manifest? How, how is it given yeah. to the world around you, those that you love and those that you're trying to encourage and help? So Some of the most, I'm going to say this like it's a fact or a quote. I'm right. just making this up on the fly. Um, I like to think my opinions are true, um, as most of us do. <laughs> yes. Some of the most glorious things have happened without an audience. Certainly. That's a that's true. And there is an audience of one, one. Right. in those moments. Right. 
Right, that's good. Um, and some of you that are listening or watching right now, maybe yeah. you've experienced those moments, and yeah. you didn't have an audience but God. That doesn't mean it's not glorious, yeah. right? That doesn't mean it's not part of your glory. Yeah, it it one hundred percent is or could be. So let let's let's dive into definition and clarity and and and, and some scripture. Um, you know this this term glory uh it, it's important that we unpack it just a little bit so how how is it talked about in the bible how is it talked about in the scriptures this is this is the idea that god god capital g god god has the capital g glory mm-hmm. and um and what we mean by that is a splendor a weightiness yeah. um a presence. Majestic b- beauty. Yeah. yeah. Beauty is very much a part of, of glory, something mm-hmm. that's that's beautiful. Resplendence. Um, yep. yep. Weightiness. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, you have it out. I've got the definition up in front of me. That's where I'm coming up with Vines, words. Uh, the Hebrew is, um, it means weightiness, splendor, honor in abundance, um, mm-hmm. and, and, and it's holy. They're like a holy presence that's felt. Mm-hmm. It's something that is felt. Mm-hmm. It's something that's observed. It's something that is experienced. All of that works when we're talking about glory. So the glory of you, right, it would be the effect of you, mm-hmm. the impact of you. Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't mean that um, you couldn't have a negative impact. Oh, yeah. It's not It's not all impact. Mm-hmm. Because we all know that sin is impactful. It, right. It can hurt. Your, your underlying someone. motivations. Right. So right. we're not talking about everything that impacts. I mean, well, that's glory. That, right. No. And ma- many of us have saddled our glory um, and used it. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, write that question Ooh, down. Okay. I, How have you done that, Because that may be part two. No, no, that's for you. <laughs> have you used your... Um, so in the in the Old Testament, when that word Shekinah glory, it, mm-hmm. it's the presence of God filling a place, bringing, uh, and and there, and indwelling. And in the Old Testament, you know, um, yeah, there's not to get too far into some of the technical ideas, but um, God's presence would would kind of show up. Yes, it's in in all creation, but it would um, the uh, the the fire by night. Right. And the um, pillar of fire and the cloud by cloud day. By day. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's in the ark. I mean, mm-hmm. well, now. When Jesus comes in with the new covenant. And he in John 17, he he. Is bringing the high priestly prayer, he's basically saying, I, I, I've got to go away so that something more. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think that the idea is something better, but something more can show up. And it's the spirit, the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. The mm-hmm. Holy Spirit was dropping in in different times and places. But now the spirit's going to indwell. Us. So we're now the holy of holies. We're now the temple of, of God. Mm-hmm. He now resides in us through the, with and through the Holy Spirit. So that's pretty dead gum good. Yeah. And so there's a, a work that he's doing. And that is um, a lot of, of, with our participation, we have a say in this. Our wills matter and, and our engagement matters. But the more and more free we can get from the effect of sin, mm-hmm. from the history of sin in our lives, the things that the people have done to us, that's, that's that, what we talk about, getting your heart back, recovery, um, really dismantling and disassociating with this false self and the old man mm-hmm. and and living in the new. Yeah. So all of that's really important, SJ, for the glory of your life to be you gotta get that crap out of the way for for this to come up and yeah. f- and, and and through. If and, and, it, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have a like, okay, now I'm over all of that and I'm done healing. Now I can focus on my glory. It just doesn't work that way, but we're never done healing until the day that we're called home. But, I, I just uh, but there in, is a process. It's, it's interesting you said that. I just read in Jay Stringer's book, um, um, Unwanted, um, that and later in his book he's talking about healing. Mm-hmm. And I really, I agree. He said in all his research and, all, and, and he's a therapist, he said 
it's taken at least two and sometimes three years for somebody to recover, at least begin to get off of them all the stuff that was put on them mm -hmm. in, their, in their journey. And, mm -hmm. and we've talked about that for, oh, yeah. for years. That We've been doing it. It, it takes a while. Yeah. And so not that healing... Um, I, I, I'm okay with the indefiniteness of, of healing, but what I'm a real champion of is, yeah, man, the bigger chunks fall first. I mean, there, there's, there's <clears> something <throat> about the healing journey that you get, um, yeah, you got to get some of the bigger stuff taken care of, father wounds, mother wounds, the vows and the agreements that you made, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the primary lies that you've lived under, and that's the beginning of like, oh, no, this is a lot worse. <laughs> so there's a lot more of it. It's a lot worse. But I want to just say for the purpose of this podcast that it's those things that have come against your glory. That's right. It's all of that. Those are the things that are like a wet blanket yes, over your glory. No that, doubt. that prevent somebody from living free, being free and offering mm -hmm goodness. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing I'd say about uh, uh, some of the definition of, of your glory. It is your goodness. Mm. It's your goodness. And it's, and it's what the world needs, Howard Thurman, mm -hmm. that you and only you bring. And that's, and that's you fully alive. Like you said earlier, God's goodness manifested in you specifically mm -hmm. and it, uniquely. Yeah. Um, it was Irenaeus, St. Irenaeus who said, the glory of God mm -hmm. is man fully alive. Mm -hmm. So I'm just I'm just trying to orbit this enough so that yeah. so that it can it can be um, understood in a way that's like okay, and the path to your glory is east into the darkness into the darkness mm -hmm. to 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 chase this not to chase the sun west but to go into the darkness meet and, and meet it darkness. at sunrise mm -hmm. you know that. That in the darkness is is the work of recovering your glory. Yeah. Getting unencumbered from the lies of the enemy that people put on you, put in you, and have somehow corrupted your goodness mm -hmm. and, and what you bring and you alone bring to the world. So um, uh, let me just hit a couple more theological, biblical things, and you can uh, please, please jump in. Yeah. Uh, Genesis. This is from the message, and and I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about something that Eugene Peterson says in a little bit. Uh, but in the message translation of Genesis one, God spoke, "Let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and yes, Earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth." God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. Boom. Yeah. Image yeah. bearing. Right. He created the male and female. God blessed them and said, you guys are in charge. Yeah. So we share, we are created, and then we share in creation, mm -hmm. especially the, the maintenance, the stewardship, the, the, um, the, the ongoing um, responsibilities that are given to us to care for what God has made. So in mm -hmm. that way, we, we partner with him. So yeah. that's that when I, we think about being God-like, small g, there, that's, that's, that's why we have a glory, because he has a glory. Yeah, I used to, I love that, the way he says that, uh, reflecting God's nature. It reminds me, I used to say when I was a new Christian, you know, I, I had this sort of I don't know if it was holy or what it was, but just this idea of like, you know, Jesus, when people let me be like a mirror so that I'm just reflecting you to people. So they don't see me, but they see you, which yeah. sounds really yeah. holy. Or, you know? or how about the but, I need to get out of the way? Yeah. And just let them experience let God have his way. You That's know? just not the way. No, no, the no. Scriptures so are clear. Reflect, no. I, I, I'm the mirror reflecting God's nature, yeah. but it's not obscuring me. Hmm. Right. I'm, I am made in the image of God. So I, God doesn't want to obscure me. Right. No. He wants to show my glory <laughs> in the way it's uniquely made for me yeah. to the world and for others. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. what we've been told is that, no, no, that's 
that's what you're a little too high on yourself when you say stuff like that or you're you're a little too haughty or this or that and sure there's an opportunity for that for hubris to come in if you're not careful uh, if i were the enemy that's what i'd want to do yeah but but man to to be able to look at you michael you caleb you know my wife sherry and see the nature of god in that person it's a powerful thing powerful oh idea gosh. and and those moments yeah. Those moments come, you know, um, from time to time where maybe even internally as a Christian, as a as a kingdom man, you know, you feel that you feel the the uh, the loving gaze of God upon you because you're reflecting his glory to another person in the Mm -hmm. unique way he's made you to reflect it. I mean, uh, those moments have been rare. but I want them to be more frequent. I was going to say, I don't. You know? I think in the normal Christian life, um, Henry Nowen, Watchman Nee, <laughs> no Dallas Willard, those should be more normal. That should be life. That should be the. That should be the ongoing. Yeah. So here's here's what here's what Eldridge wrote in Waking the Dead um, some years ago. I dare say, we've heard a bit about original sin, but not enough about original glory, mm-hmm. which comes before sin and is deeper to our nature. We were crowned with glory and honor. Why does a woman long to be beautiful? Why does a man hope to be found brave? Because we remember, if only faintly, that we were once more than we are now. The reason you doubt there could be a glory to your life is because that glory has been the object of a long and brutal war. Mm -hmm. So that's John. Now, I don't know how this guy gets away with it. Uh, um, Lewis, C.S. Lewis. He says some stuff. Okay, C.S. Lewis in <laughs> screw tape letters. Oh yeah. Let me just let me get this in yeah. here because, yeah. uh, and again, you've got a. Um, this is, this is the enemy talking. So I'm going to read it though more plainly. Mm-hmm. But this is this is two demons talking about God. Mm-hmm. And they don't even like to say God. They, right. They say you, him. So you're, so you're narrating yes. their dialogue. Yeah. yeah. So he did not create humans. This is he, God did not create humans. He did not become one of them and die among them by torture in order to produce candidates for limbo failed humans. He wanted to make saints, gods, things like himself. Mm -hmm. So how does Lewis get away with, I I got another Lewis quote in a minute. (laughs) That's just, that's, it's the even en- more The enemy brash. knows the scriptures. Right, right. And, and so by default then you would think, or by extension, if the enemy knows the, knows the scripture, then he knows yeah. and can interpret the meaning of it and, this is, and its intention. And this is what the enemy and does not want. And then take it and use right. it against you. He, so he, the enemy's fine with you becoming failed humans, mm-hmm. even saved humans. Mm-hmm. What the enemy does not want is you becoming Godlike through the love relationship and intimate yeah, res- experiencing he, of God's he love. He doesn't want you to be operating in your true Proverbs self. Proverbs 13 says, when the lovers of God teach you truth, a fountain of life opens up within you. That's the glory. Mm-hmm. The, the fountain of life opens up within you and their wise instruction will deliver you from the ways of death. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 61 um, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. They'll be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. For the display of his splendor. That's right. Um, can, hang on, Caleb. We're going to get get a couple more in here to, so we can close. He's giving us the high sign. He's about, we're he's about out of time. Call, Yeah. This is – so – 2 Corinthians 3, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we all know, and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. So these are just a few, uh, I'll, I'll have to surprise everybody with the next uh, C.S. Lewis quote in the next uh, episode, but um what is the effect of your life that's that's the the glory of your life um and
if you've ever have you've ever heard of that little book, Practicing the Presence of God, Brother Lawrence, mm-hmm. that that is a that is a great book for this very topic, the glory of a little monk whose teaching and whose um, monastic ways has been it's 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 a collection of his letters and his and his and his notes to people who sought out his wisdom and how do i live more like you how do i practice the presence of god when i'm doing the dishes or gardening or you know experiencing god i want to experience god more so you know and he got to yeah record or have these collected and recorded mm-hmm. as a um as a way to invite people and encourage people to practice the presence of God. So maybe we can talk about this a little bit more in the next episode to 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for a, an eternal weight of glory hmm. beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Mm-hmm. So this eternal glory that we carry around yeah. with us yeah, and these things that are in the way and the things that are distracting us. And I mean, practicing the, the presence of your glory. We talk about practicing the presence of God. Yeah. Right. But practicing the presence of your glory in day to day moments when these things that are seen kind of try to yeah. get into the way it's it's putting you in touch with the in- eternal. Yeah. While we're still in this momentary affliction. Yeah. So let me end with this. Ask me why, why not more people, why don't more people practice their glory? Why don't more people, what do you think? Why is it that more people don't practice their glory? I'm glad you Michael, asked. What is that? Um, because they, they live in and, and with and have settled for the wounded life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They've settled for the afflicted life. And, the glory Mm -hmm. is that life is only available through the healing, the healing process, the healing journey, the hero's journey, right? The heroine's journey and, and all of those elements that are in, in that, in that journey, um, they're what I want to say. They, it, it's so, difficult to offer your goodness if you don't know what it is <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> and, you, yeah. and you and you haven't reclaimed it mm-hmm. you haven't gone and slayed the dragons yeah you haven't gotten the the potion I, or, every or once the in a while you, you might stumble you, upon it once in a while but you're not living intentionally and in understanding yeah. what that is could yeah. be randomly on display from time to time every once in a while and um so i think that's that's what we we can talk a little bit about that process um, just to highlight it in the next in the next segment. Um, well, we've done a ton of podcasts about healing. Yes. We've done a ton of podcasts yeah. about. I mean, our last episode I think yeah. was about being at war. Or a recent episode was. Yeah, I want to. So, so we got to talk a little bit about how do you how do you recover that? But then mm-hmm. um, and then we can talk about um, what it is and isn't. You you said something earlier in this show about roles and assignments and, mm-hmm. and, and using it or, or yeah. offering it. So I want to, yeah. I want to, we, we want to get to that. So, um, yeah, we're going to land part one and uh, hopefully you'll join us for, for part two. I think we're going to, just going to roll right into it and keep going. But, uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us for the exploring more podcast. Um, it's been glorious. It has been, this is one of the, um, I think this is one of the greatest benefits of the Christian life. Yeah. And I find that it's uh, probably the greatest thing in the Christian life that's not that that's that's not understood, not talked about, not not experienced and yeah. And therefore uh, the people in your world are probably not experiencing the best of you. Yeah. So let's quit missing out on that. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's get on the on the journey, on the path to yeah. to uh, yeah. recovering your good heart, because it's there that that your glory can be 
recovered, redeemed, restored, and then offered right. to those who so badly need it. So badly need somebody walking in their goodness and feeling the weight of the kingdom of God in and through you as you partner with God to love others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to love others. Mm -hmm. So we will see you next time on the Exploring More podcast for part two of The Glory of Your Life. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us and the life of more by visiting Zoe on Uversion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, with God there is always more, and you were made for more. <laughs>